So hello everybody, another month, another Microsoft conference and more Power BI news. In this latest Microsoft conference called Build, they have actually announced the death of the hacks and we need to talk about it. So I will talk about what they released for Power BI and what to expect for the DAX future. So let's get started. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so this week it was Build. It was another Microsoft conference, not focused on Power BI, but they released some Power BI news. And um, let's go through them, and then we will talk about DAX. So the first thing that they release is automatical aggregations in Power BI. If you don't know what aggregations is, it's basically when you optimize the tables for frequently asked questions. So normally, for example, if you have data on a day uh, level, and the questions are being mostly asked a month, so it creates automatically an aggregated table by month that uses to query those uh, questions. So the responses are faster. Beautiful, beautiful. You could do that before manually, but now it's going to be done automatically. Uh, this is wonderful. Great news. The next one is the streaming data flows. And this is going to be exciting for you, for those companies or you know people that have live data. So for example, in their example, they are visualizing where taxis are around New York. And it is a great example. So any type of live data, you can actually put it through Power Query and clean it live and then display it. Beautiful update, actually, if you have live data. Otherwise, obviously, there's not going to be a lot of use for you. Okay, so the next one is deployment pipelines, and they have added automation APIs that will enable developers to use tools such as Azure DevOps, GitHub, and Azure pipelines to automate the deployment of Power BI stuff. Okay, so great news too. If you are a user, obviously. Now, for the meat of the update, the death, the announcement of the death of DAX, or the, you know, writing that code, quite interesting. So here's the thing, there is a um, organization called OpenAI, and one of the things that has come out of this is something called a GPT-3, which stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer 3, <laughs> which is a natural language algorithm, right? And I have actually seen, that right now it's just a few, you have to apply for it. I applied for it, I never got it. Just a handful of companies have has access to. Microsoft is sponsored this initiative. And uh, you've probably seen GPT-3, especially on LinkedIn. I've seen it a thousand times. I'm going to post a click so you can see what it does. So this reminds me a little bit of data types, but you have no idea of where the source come from. So take a close look at that, where I'm showing you or there. I'm not sure where it is. Because not everything is as you seem, and it is important for my conclusion at the end. So here's the thing. What has GPT-3 has to do with that? And what they are doing is they are experimenting, or they have created a, um, using GPT-3, you will be able to ask with natural language DAX questions and the DAX code will get generated for you, okay? Which means that we won't have to write the DAX. And to be honest, I'm not sad about it. I mean, I find DAX puzzles fun, but, but you know, at the, in the right time. And sometimes I just get stuck and it's just frustrating because it's not really giving us value added to try to figure out how an engine is filtering things in the background for you to be able to do calculations. So if we could actually ask questions and get results, that would be fabulous. I'm serious. I'm all over it. But <laughs> here comes the but. Again, do you remember the GPT-3 demo that I showed you? Have you looked closer at it? There are some buts and some concerns. If you look, you know, I actually went online and went to, what is the population in Ohio? And it matches because it was, you know, written by a user. I checked the population in California, it matched too. And then I checked the population in Alaska. And the number that the GPT-3 returned, it was not the same year, at least. I've checked and it was around 1996 that Alaska had 600,000 in population. So, ugh. and the same was for Michigan, right? So it was around 2007 that Michigan had 10 million 
And when it comes to the founding date, I thought, oh, that must be an easier one. Well, even though it's an easier one, it's still the GPT-3 got it wrong. So what I'm trying to say with this and everything that has to do with AI for now, check it, check it. I'm going to be all over this. I'm going to test it. I'm going to be really happy if this works but I'm not going to trust whatever number comes up or whatever DAX calculation comes up unless I check it and I know that whatever is coming up is actually correct because I am a skeptic that AI is that good at this point of time. It will be, but I'm, <laughs> I'm a skeptical. For what I have seen of GPT-3, I'm not too impressed, to be honest. But... It will hopefully give us an idea of how the DAX should be, even if it's not, even if it might not get it correctly. Another thing I want to mention, you know, I have used this column by example in Power Query just when I wanted to have something that I was like, oh, you know, I have to nest it a lot of if or something. I said, oh, maybe this column by example will actually help me uh, write the code so I don't have to do, write it myself. And I have tested it. And what I found of that is that it is a brute force approach. The code was absolutely hideous and probably not very performant, to be honest, because it was just checking like a machine would check, check everything. And, and you know, I, I wish I would have recorded that example because it was so such a good example of how a machine writes code versus how a person writes code. And I... Hopefully I'm wrong, but I'm guessing that what this DAX thing is going to do is probably the same. It's a brute force approach, maybe scanning the entire table, row by row, trying to find, you know, it would not have this finesse of, you know, doing clever optimizations in the DAX code. But, hey, it is the beginning. And I'm serious about this. If this thing works, I'm going to use it all the time. All the time, because I don't see DAX as a valid thing. If I can just, you know, ask questions, I get the answer, <laughs> okay? So let's see what it takes out. I don't think it has been released yet, but as soon as it gets released, how about we put this EPT3 to the test and see if it can give us the right answer or not. I'm really looking forward to that. Let me know down below what you think about this. The Dax Friday, this video that was supposed to come out today will come out next week, obviously. So looking forward to your comments. I will see you again on Tuesday with another Power BI video. And uh, if you haven't checked my Charticleer video that I published yesterday, make sure you check it out. It's actually quite cool. I love Charticleer. I, I'm, I'm in love again <laughs> with that thing. Okay, I'm going to stop talking. Have a great, not weekend because we have tomorrow still, but have a great day. I'll see you soon.